income tax, gross income, adjustable gross income, and taxable income. When it comes to the taxes, the federal taxes in the United States, things can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. So we're going to take this uh, hopefully one step at a time. There's a lot going on here. In this video, our objective is simply to define and determine your gross income, your adjusted gross income, and your taxable income. The taxable income is the income that the government taxes. They don't tax all of your income because you can adjust it. You can, you can subtract many things. What they're looking for is what is the amount of your income that is taxable, and that's what they'll be taxing, which we'll deal with in the next video. So some definitions. This video has a fair amount of definitions in it. Your gross income is simply your total income. It's everything. Everything that comes to you during the calendar year. It includes income from your wages, your tips, any interest you earn from a savings account or a bank account, any dividends you earn from, uh, from stock purchases, any unemployment compensation, any income you earn from rental property, anything you win from a game show or a lottery, etc., etc., etc. Gross income is the total of all income you get. Okay, from there, you can make adjustments to that. Okay, adjustments are the untaxed portion of your gross income. So some of this, okay, some of the total of all this is untaxed. What does that include? Well, certain retirement account contributions are untaxed. Student loan interest is untaxed, alimony payments, etc. Okay, so this is the untaxed portion of what this is. So our adjusted gross income, okay, is our also called the AGI, is our gross income minus our adjustments. Okay. Now, you can further subtract some things. Once you get to there, you can keep subtracting. Okay, so now, next up, we have what are called exemptions and deductions. Okay, so adjustments, exemptions, and deductions are things you can subtract from your income to, uh, to lessen, to make smaller your taxable income. Okay, so exemptions and deductions are reductions to or subtractions from your adjusted gross income, also again known as your AGI. What's an exemption? It's a fixed amount for every person that is supported by your income. If you're single, you get one exemption. If you're single with one child that you're supporting, you get two exemptions, etc., etc. Okay, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. What's a deduction? Deduction is expenses you incur that the government does not tax. It's kind of a broad and not particularly well defined. There are two general, there are two types of deductions. Okay, you can take a standard deduction, which is a lump sum. Okay, generally, if you don't own a home, you would take the standard deduction. Or you can take an itemized deduction, which is a total of allowable expenses that you'll list individually. Again, if this one's used by those who don't own a home, your itemized deduction is used by, again, generally used by, do, by those who do own a home. And you can see why. Expenses that are under the deduction category include mortgage interest, well that says you own a home, property taxes, well that says you own a home, state taxes, and charitable contributions, and there are others as well. Okay, so when, you, when it comes to deductions, you choose the larger of the two because you're trying to reduce 
your adjusted gross income to get the smallest possible taxable income. So let's recap that because it's not easy. You start off with your gross income. Okay, you subtract from that what the government calls adjustments. Okay, you subtract your adjustments. Money that goes to retirement account, student loan interest, money you pay in alimony, for example. You take your gross income, you subtract your adjustments, and you come up with your a adjusted gross income, better known as your AGI. Okay, now we're going to further subtract. You now get to subtract exemptions. And then you get to, I'm probably make my subtraction sign there a bit better. And then you get to subtract what the government calls deductions. Okay, once you've done that, you come up with your taxable income the income that the government will look at to calculate taxes on. So the government is not concerned about your gross income to, to pay taxes because you get to take a lot of things away depending upon your situation. And down here is your taxable income and that is the amount of income that you pay taxes on. Okay, so taxable income. This is what the government will calculate your taxes on. And of course, it takes place after all adjustments are made and all allowable exemptions and deductions are subtracted. So a lot of subtraction goes on before you come up with a number that we then the government then calculates your tax on, which we're going to do in the next video. Okay? So, let me summarize this again. It is kind of complicated. It is, uh, our system is certainly not one of the easier systems in the, in the world. Summarize, gross income is total income for the year. Income from all sources. Adjusted gross income, known as your AGI, is your gross income minus any adjustments that you have. Again, go to retirement accounts, student loan interest, alimony are three of the big categories. Your taxable income is then a further subtraction away. Your adjusted gross income minus your exemptions based on how many people you support with your income minus deductions. And you either take a standard deduction or you can itemize or list your deductions and you take the deduction that's larger because again, you're trying to reduce your taxable income to make it as small as possible. Okay, how about an example? And let me get my pencil ready because I'm running out of lead here. Give me a second. There we go, got new lead, I'm ready to go. Okay, example number one. We're only going to do one example here. I think this will make sense once you see an example. A lot of vocabulary. We have a single woman. She earned wages of $87,200. Not bad. And she received $2,680 in interest from a savings account. Okay? She then contributed $3,200 to a tax-deferred savings plan, kind of like retirement. She is entitled to a personal exemption, one personal exemption, because she is single, and she gets $4,050 uh, that she can exempt for supporting herself. Now, if she had one child she was supporting, she would do 4,050 times two. If she were supporting two children, she would do herself plus two, so 4,050 times three. If she's supporting her mother, 
she would get another, she would get a $4,050 exemption for supporting her mother on her income as well. In this case, she's single, she's only supporting herself, so she gets one exemption of $4,050, and, and she gets a standard deduction of $6,300. Okay, in addition, the interest that was paid on her home mortgage, so she owns a home, she paid $11,700 $11, in interest in th this year. She paid $4,300 in property taxes this year. And she paid $5,220 in state taxes this year. In addition, she gave away $15,000 to charity. Okay, so we have a lot of information here. Let's determine her gross income her adjusted gross income, or her AGI, and how much the government will tax, or what, what is her taxable income, how much income the government will use to calculate the amount she owes in taxes. Okay, so we know that gross income equals all income. Okay, well, she got wages of $87,200. And her other income was some interest she earned from a savings account. So she also has $2,680 in income. Her gross income is add up all income. Notice she didn't win any game show winnings. Uh, no rental property is mentioned here. Just these two items are income. So her gross income is $89,880. Okay, again, this is not the amount the government's looking for to calculate taxes on. They allow you to adjust it with uh, adjustments, and then they allow you to take away deductions and exemptions. So let's keep going. A term in her adjusted gross income. Okay, well, her adjusted gross income is equal to her gross income minus allowable adjustments. Okay, well her gross income is right here. All income was $89,880. And in this case, she only has one adjustment She's single, she didn't pay alimony, maybe she has no student loan interest, but she gave, she contributed $3,200 to a tax deferred savings plan. Well, the government allows her to adjust her gross income by that amount, subtract it out. So her adjustable gross income is $86,680. So you can see we're getting smaller Okay, we're, we're working our way to her taxable income. Okay, now let's determine her taxable income. How much income is the government going to look at and base her, tax, her taxes on? Okay, taxable income equals her adjusted gross income minus exemptions. minus what they call deductions. Okay, let's first look at exemptions. Okay, well, come back up to here. She's entitled to a personal exemption of $4,050. Because she's only supporting herself, that's, an exempt, that's what she's allowed. Okay, if she were supporting more people, we would multiply that by the number of people that are being supported by her income. But in this case, her personal exemption is 4050. We multiply it by one. She is the only person being supported by her income. So her exemption is $4,050. Now let's look at her deductions her deduction possibilities, her deduction options. She can choose to take the standard deduction 
or she can choose, I'll put verses, to take the itemized deduction. Whichever is larger is the one she wants to take. Okay, well her standard deduction, it tells us up here, okay, in her she, being a single woman, she's entitled to a standard deduction of six to three hundred dollars. So in the standard deduction column, she can choose to subtract, not 68, 6,300 dollars. Well, let's list her deductions and see if this total is greater than this number. Her itemized deduction, well, she owns a home. Okay, as soon as you own a home, chances are good when you list them, you'll have a higher total. Okay, well, she had $11,700 in mortgage interest. She had $4,300 in property taxes. She had $5,220 in state taxes. And she gave away $15,000 in charity. Well, that's a lot. Okay, if we add up all those numbers, if she were to list all of her deductions and get a total, she, she could, she, her, her itemized deduction column adds up to 36,220. Well, this one is way larger than this one. And again, we're trying to keep the income, the taxable income as low as possible. So in this case, we want to choose this one. Again, generally, when you own a home and you, you can take all these and you can add them up and you can get a much, you can get a larger number than if you take the standard deduction. Generally, if you don't own a home, you won't have as much over here and the standard deduction is usually the higher of the two. We, in this case, we want to go with itemize. We want to keep subtracting as much as possible to calculate our taxable income. So, our taxable income. is equal to the adjusted gross income. That's right here, 86,680, minus our exemptions. Well, she's taken, the, she's taken one exemption for herself, so she's gonna subtract 4050, minus either the standard deduction or the itemized deduction, whichever is greater, this is greater. So we're going to subtract, we're going to further subtract 36,220. Okay, we do all this math, 86 plus minus 4,000 minus 36-ish, and her taxable income is $46,410. What a difference. Okay, I think I can keep on this, keep on the page. Notice, her gross income was almost $90,000. Well, she got to do some subtraction. Subtracted an adjustment, subtracted an exemption, subtracted a number of items over here of deductions. And what the government's going to look for for tax purposes is about half of that in this case. The government is going to be focused on $46,410 for taxable purposes, okay? We're gonna use this exact same number in the next video to calculate her taxes. But again, I'll remind you, a whole lot goes on before we get here. And it, you know, what you're looking to do is to make this number as small as possible legally so you pay as little tax to the government as possible.